Now continuing from our last video, we've got a monkey that moves but doesn't move well enough and a jump that's really messed up because if you keep pressing up, all you do is fly. So in our next two videos, we have to correct the two problems that we made when we set the movement of this monkey up. So let's go to our stencil and see where we are. We've got our move left and right still there and our jump still there. What we're going to need to do now is to figure out how to get the monkey to move in such a way that he speeds up and slows down in a cooler way. So what we're going to do right away is go to our attributes. Now attributes in every other programming system is called a variable, but Stencil calls it attributes, which is a bit annoying because an attribute is actually something different in programming. We're going to create an attribute, which is going to be a number. And what we're going to store in this number is the x velocity, that's the x axis, left and right, and the velocity, which is the speed of the monkey. We're going to press OK to that. And what we're going to do is just disable our move left and right over here. So if I was to test the game now, there is no move left and right because I've switched it off. What we're going to do is create a when creating. In other words, we're going to set up when the game starts what the velocity of the monkey is. I'm going to call that set velocity like that. And when this game is created, what I want to do is set the x velocity to zero. I want the x velocity or the speed of the monkey to be zero. I want it to be standing still. What we're going to do is add a new when updating. We're going to, of course, rename that and call it new move left and right, just so that we know it's the new version. And what we're going to do is similar to our previous move left and right, we're going to, of course, use the left key and the right key to move them. But rather than telling the monkey to move, we're going to tell x velocity to change. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the actors and the motion. And we're going to say set the x speed of our monkey To x velocity like so. So of course if you remember we set the velocity to zero over here and now what we're saying is set the x speed of that monkey to whatever x velocity is. At this moment it's zero. Let's throw two ifs in there, get our user input so that we've got our left and our right taken care of. So that's control left, this will be control right so it's very similar to our last one, but where it's going to change is right now. What we're going to do, go back to our attributes and go to where it says setters. What we're going to do now is when we press the left and the right, we're not going to tell the x speed to change, but we're going to tell the x velocity, this number that used to be zero, we're going to tell it to change. And we're going to tell it to change in a slightly cool way. We need to go to numbers and text and we need a plus and a minus. Put the plus in the right and the minus in the left. Go back to attributes. We're going to put an x velocity in both the minus and the plus. And what we're going to do is put the number two in both of them. So let's just slow it down and explain what's happening here. When the game starts, we have this new number called x velocity and we set it to zero. Now in the new move left and right, we set the x speed to x velocity. What that means is it's always, when updating means always, 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 always. Always set the x speed to the x velocity. In this case, it's zero because we didn't actually do anything to x velocity. We haven't pressed the button, so it's zero. So the x speed is the same as x velocity. Now when we press left, we take whatever x velocity is, and we minus two from it. So if it's zero, it will minus two, then it will go to minus four, minus six, minus eight, and it will keep going minus. That means you're now moving left. If you press the right, we're taking x velocity, which is zero, and we're adding two, and then it's gonna to go to four, six, eight, ten. So it's gonna increase, and that means it's going towards the right. So we've now taken care of the movement of the monkey left and right. So let's just quickly test this game out. And of course, like I said before, every time we solve one problem, we're going to introduce a new problem that we have to again solve. So let's see what problem we've introduced now. There's our monkey. 
And yes, he's he's moving quite well, except I can't now stop him. I'm really happy with the movement itself because it kind of feels more platform game, kind of old school, but he, he's not stopping. So that's our problem that we've introduced. So let's fix that problem right now. So it seems we've set the X speed to X velocity. The left goes minus X velocity. The right goes plus X velocity. Nothing tells the X velocity to go back to zero. In other words, stop moving the monkey. Let's figure that one out right now. We go back to setters. And outside of the ifs, what we're going to say is set the X velocity to. And what we need is a way to tell the X velocity when I'm not pressing left and I'm not pressing right, something has got to tell the monkey to slow down. We need the monkey to slow down when we're not pressing left or right, and we're going to just use a very simple bit of math to fix that. We're going to take a times box, we're going to grab our x velocity, and now what we're going to do is take our x velocity and constantly multiply it by 0 0.9. Now what this does in mathematics is if you times anything by a number that's less than one, you start to decrease its value. In other words, if you have a number and multiply it by any number less than one, the answer is going to be less than the number you started with. So let's just test this game right now and see what the effect of putting 0 0.9 is. And you can see that it actually now looks like the original movement, so we haven't really improved anything. So the secret here is that 0 0.9 is too low. So what I'm going to do is go back to stencil and we're going to change this 0 0.9 to 0 0.98. That's the number I normally use for slowing down. Let's quickly retest this game. And you can see now that as I move left and right, we get this really nice slide. And by controlling that number, which we've now set at 0 0.98, we can actually make it slide for longer or we can make it slide for much less time. It really depends on your game, what the character is, kind of what the feel of the game is. So although this is quite complicated and it's not as easy as the original move left and right, I quite like this new version because it gives us a lot more control over how our character moves. And once you've played with your character using this rather than the old one, you'll see that the old way of doing it is just not good enough.